Okay, I would like to felt these two leaves, the four inch triangle leaves that I made, and then the two four inch um, triangles that I connected, just to see, show you what they will look like. I do leave the tails on the leaves um, until after they're felted. And then um, I use glass bowls, never plastic bowls because plastic bowls may have a um, residue of butter or oil or something like that. You, you don't want that in with your felting process. You can use olive oil soap. That's really nice in your hands. Um, for small little projects like this that I do by hand, I just use a little bit of dish detergent soap and that, and, and not very much because you don't want a lot of suzzing. This may bleed so I'm going to do it in a separate bowl. I warm the water. I just put that in there to soften. And then put in the leaves in the other bowl. And just let them soak a little bit to soften those fibers, open them up. I will dry them on a clean paper towel dry, clean paper towel. If you have registers for winter drying, you can put them, um, the paper towels, on the register for nice air drying. In the summer, you can, of course, lay them out in the hot sun to dry. I don't really recommend drying things in the dryer. For one thing, little tiny projects like that are not worth using your dryer for. But if you're doing a large project, like a scarf, um, to dry it in the dryer, you might try it for two, three minutes while you're standing there and then take it out immediately. If you just stick it in the dryer to, to dry for, say, 30 minutes, you do run the risk of permanent creases in the um, felted item. And those creases um, can't be gotten out. So it's best to air dry small projects like this and large projects too. Um, so they've softened. Now I'm going to pour the water a little bit. When you're felting, you see how this is shaped nicely into a point, like a leaf or oh, strawberry. Um, whatever direction you roll it in, that's the direction it's going to felt. Now if I roll it lengthwise, that will accentuate the point. If I roll it widthwise, that'll kind of fatten it up. Now this is hand spun, hand dyed yarn, so I really don't know how it's going to feel. I've never felt it with this yarn before, so we will find out. It's pretty fuzzy, isn't it? Okay. I don't think this is going to be a real good salted item. Okay, it has felted, but it is fuzzy. What could be done after it's dry and I periodically stretch it back into shape. It's just take your scissors and lightly scissor the surface. You don't, you do want to be careful that you don't cut. But just kind of shear it. But don't cut those threads because then you really have lost the project. The water, gets, you start with lukewarm water soaking in the bowl. And then the running water, you can, um, it gets hot. And sometimes you might want to wear your gloves. You can kind of shake this and just lay it there to dry. Now, this is um, forced in wool. 
some of our salt, forced and wool. And You can see that this has a much blunter look than this one. If I were to roll it lengthwise, then you can see that the point was accentuated. But if I want a blunter leaf, roll it around and roll it lengthwise, and you can see that. It's blunted. And that's how I want this leaf, this color to look. So I'm going to stop there. That out. Now here are the two four inch triangles. Now this is the same brand of yarn, just different colors. Um, if you were to use two yarns that did not fill equally, you would have really a different look. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good. For a small project like this, I, I don't bother rinsing in cold water. Cold water will shock the fiber and stop the felting process. So this is just a small project, so I'm not going to worry about rinsing it in cold water. But you do want to rinse out the soap. You don't want that soap residue or the sudsiness to stay in there. You can see it's shrinking, felting. It's hard to know sometimes when to stop the felting. And that tends to come with experience. Now I'm just rolling it around in my hands. See? Yes, increase. Okay, that's more pretty. You could connect two more four inch triangles and um, using the same wool and make a little pin cushion to connect them. But I'm just rolling it around. I'm not particularly rolling it lengthwise or widthwise. So you can see, and I really want this max skeleton if I am going to do two more more pin cushion. There. Notice the um, plaid look, and then I would slightly stretch it, pull it, and smooth it out, and then just let them air dry. And then I would cut the tails. Although, I thought one idea, if you connected the tails, ran the tails up, especially if you use a six inch or eight inch triangle, you could make yourself a little necklace or a scarf. Connect them. Okay, but I'm going to cut these tails because they're going to be used on for a project as a, as a leaf. Okay. And they can air dry. So that's that. Felting adds a whole new dimension. More options um, for skipper pin loom fun. And there are um, just a lot of options in the world of fiber art. This is one of them. So have a lot of fun with your skipper pin looms. Thanks for joining us today. We've had a lot of fun um, showing new skipper pin loom ideas. Remember to check out our website www.bluebutterflyoriginals.com for availability and pricing and tutorial ideas about the skipper pin looms. Um, we've just had a lot of fun with one little pin loom. You get five craft options with weaving, felting, needle felting, kind of cross stitch embroidery and rug hooking. So remember with skipper pin looms, the sky's the limit.